Are we there yet? No! Are we there yet? No! Are we there yet? No! Are we there yet? Yes! Dad, I'm hungry! G'day humans, Chris Stead here. I'm on the road today. I'm at Sandbar, which is on the mid-coast of New South Wales. And behind me here is the Sandbar camping ground. Uh, I'm going to take you on a bit of a tour, give you a bit of my thoughts on what it's like to stay this place in case you're thinking about staying here. Let's uh, dive in and take a look. So here we are on the entrance road into Sandbar camping lot. Now the camping ground is broken into two spots. This is Sandbar, I believe it's just called Sandbar, and then there's the bushland camping as well, which is probably about a, I don't know, a couple of minutes just up the road there. And you can see all the surfboards here. Uh, the bushland camping spot is right next to Salido's uh, a bit of a Aussie favourite amongst those of us who surf. Um, you can also surf just out the front here at Sandbar, although it's a bit of an open beach, so it's not quite as well shaped uh, by the point. So I'm not going to review the bushland camp because I have not stayed there. I have stayed here twice now. Uh, and usually for us, we've been in cabins. We usually camp in tents. Uh, at sites like this, but unfortunately I've just lost all my camping gear in a house fire, so a couple of friends are coming up and we just jumped into one of the cabins, so I'll be able to show you at least what the cabins are like. So as you come into the road here, it's kind of isolated, but there is reception. Uh, and up there you've got beach access. You can just drive onto the beach, head down to the corner, the south corner of Sandbar, where there's great fishing, uh, good swimming and surfing, rocks to climb, sand dunes to go down, just paradise basically. You can kayak over there from here, I'll show you in a sec. You've got the little general store here. This is where the reception is and your bits and pieces, bread, milk, bait, uh, wood. You can have fire pits, uh, any, any of the campsites, ice, all that kind of stuff. Uh, it's really hard to get in contact with these guys sometimes. They can spend, so just persevere. Uh, they're usually just under undermanned for the amount of traffic they get just their check-in and check-out times. There's a fuel um, pump here as well, and to my great surprise, it was actually cheaper here than it was out on the highway. Usually it's the other way around, but that's good. Now, back at the bushland place, which is just basically just, there's no, it's not water facing, it's just trees. Um, so a bit of a walk down to the beach, otherwise they're pretty similar. Uh, and there's no cabins over there, but there is glamping I noticed, and it's all right next to a golf course if that's your go. So I'll show you, that's the entry down there, and you've got cabins lined up the whole way along this length. Everything else is a campsite. There's powered options, non-powered options. I think over here, they've got, I, don't think, I think friends and family stay there actually, to be honest. Uh, but maybe it's overflow as well. So down here, there's kind of day parking. So it's kind of, you can park down here. I think it's all private property. They let people park down here. Uh, obviously not stay here overnight but you can put excess cars or boats or trailers just on this side of the fence here and they're pretty safe. The whole campsite's pretty safe. You can just walk you down to the water's edge so you can see how close it is. They've done, a, I reckon, a good job just looking after, this, after the place. You can see it's all, you know, it's not long overgrown stuff. It's, uh, you can see little fire pits here as well. So you can hire fire pits, bring a fire pit, or there's a couple of kind of communal ones that you can use if you get there first or don't mind having a yarn to someone. Now, I've been here during the drought. It's the last time I came here and you had to walk about another 200 meters out there, 300 even, to get to the water, uh, which was actually kind of cool. There's this huge sand flat that all the kids could just run a muck on and you could um, yabby pump a lot easier, or pump the yabbies and, and the fishing was really good because the water was small, but lots of fish, less water, easy to find them. But there's a, I mean, it's a beautiful spot. So you can just kayak out there, obviously take boats out. You know, these kayaks have been there since last night, I think. So that gives you an idea of the kind of security of the place. And way over there is where we were yesterday. We just drove out there on the beach, got a beach permit, which is $100 for a year or $60 for 30 days. But it's not just this beach, it's all the mid-coast beaches. And you get out, of the, get out of the southern wind up there and we fished and boy, did we have a fish. We um, really caught a lot of stuff. Uh, 
multiple flathead, multiple brim, flounder, whiting, tailor. We've caught so many different fish, it's so good. Uh, and we ate a lot of them. So I'll take you back over to the campsites and just give you a gander. Now I'm not going to mention prices because there's just there's too many different variations in pricing and there is also uh, changes. So I'll put that in the description. Now these little cabins up here, these are the non-ensuite. So they're just like, I've stayed in one of these before. It's just basically one side's got four bunk beds and in the middle there's a kitchen. Might even be three bunk beds, two and one, I can't remember. Uh, then there's a kitchen in the middle, like kitchenette. And then you've got uh, a like double on the side, little TV up on the wall. Uh, pretty old school. It was like they were built a long time ago. Rustic, uh, but also not awfully expensive. In fact, the first time we stayed here, I don't know if it's the same now, it was so marginally more to pay for a cabin over a tent, even in school holidays. And you can see everyone gets a table there, look all the way along. So I think it'd be really good fun to just grab like two or three of these cabins in a row if you were so inclined. Uh, but without the ensuite, you're using the camp toilets, which are here. I will say that if you're staying in these cabins here, you, the sound of like shower and toilet doors going bang, bang, bang can be a little distracting, something to think about. Um, but if you're down where we are, then you've got the sports field and stuff, so uh, maybe that's no escaping up. A uh, couple of clotheslines over here. I think this is a little laundry in here. Just give you an idea of some of the facilities. Uh, it's a really nice and open space, shady, pretty protected from the wind. There's a little breeze now, but it's not too bad. I just noticed around here is a little um, place to do your dishes and so forth if you're camping. Um, bins everywhere, and as you can see down here, um, power and tap options at most sites as well, uh, as well as some hard spots now. It was probably about 60% full. We're here during the Easter school holidays. I was pretty surprised that it wasn't kind of that more full, but 60% full, I reckon. And that was pretty perfect. There's enough space to play cricket and kick a ball around between the sites. Uh, there's a 10 o'clock noise curfew here and everyone was pretty awesome with that. I don't really think I've heard any dis distracting sounds. I have been here in the January school holidays. It's a little bit different, a little bit rowdier. Uh, and it's been full and it's pretty hectic when it's full. So you can see it gets pretty jammed in. Uh, and the last time we were here was during the drought. It was very dusty and, and a little bit full on, but uh, it's, a, it's come good in the time since. It's a lot greener, it's a lot nicer. Now we've had just some pretty significant rain just before we arrived. So you can see a couple of puddles about. But the actual ground, which is obviously very, very much on the water table here on the sand, is drained pretty well. And you can see people have got fires and so forth. So I'll just walk you through the middle here just so you can get an idea of the space. I don't think there's any particular advantage to most of these spots, but you can see some decent water there. And some of the concrete blocks are bigger than others. Do note that the concrete blocks take up most of the site. So if you're pitching a tent, you're gonna to have to make sure you don't get one that's like that, or you're stuffed. There is kind of, it's all, pretty, all really flat. Uh, you can see into the, like I said, it's the paper bark, I think, into the trees there. And I'll give you a quick little glimpse on the other side of that you can see, I won't walk all the way over there, but you can see it into the uh, lake on the other side as well, where you can drop boats off and Run amongst so the kids have had a great, great time just running between the fishing. Oh, you can see here, this is pretty cool. Right in the middle of the campground, this is a dedicated sports field. So they don't put tent, anyone stays here. So you've got this kind of spot right in the center of everybody where all the kids can just come and, and not be kicking balls in the tents and so forth. 
You can see here there's these three cabins. We stayed in one of those and I'll show you more in the cabin in depth in a sec. Uh, but if you've got like all three of those cabins, for example, um, that'd be quite quite a, a fun option, especially if, or in a couple of sites right next to it, you could have a real good group gathering. Now up here under the trees is what I believe they refer to as the premium tent sites. I remember booking uh, this and you know it was a bit more expensive if you wanted to stay up here so it's a bit more secluded you don't have people on all sides of you it's a bit closer to the water and you got more shade in terms of the trees uh, and you're up, up up the hill a bit there so you're not going to get flooded uh, in a big downpour so that is an advantage uh, I don't know the price difference whether it's up for uh, whether, whether it's good or not, but you'd have to make a decision for yourself there. So that's pretty much, we've pretty much walked through all the camping spaces now, so that gives you a pretty good idea. I reckon these sites down here are pretty awesome. You've got no one on the other side of you, and you kind of got the, the shade, uh, the tree roots and that, which are going to hold the ground together a bit better. And you can see that people having nice big fires. And, uh, when you get through all these trees and even back where we were before the stars up here are really quite good considering how close we are to newcastle probably an hour and a half from newcastle probably 30 minutes north to foster uh it's worth worth noting that there is a smith lake town just on the other side of the water there that you can see which will take you uh, which has a little general store some booze a couple of little restaurants bolo uh, and then you can also drive into Blueys, which is probably about five to ten minutes away. And there's a lot of little cafes there, news agency and, and other bits and pieces. So that will give you some insight there into getting around. Uh, for those of you who surf, obviously Salido's awesome. Uh, Boomerang and Blueys just up north it was uh, pumping yesterday. And then just south you've got Seal Rocks, Treachery, Lighthouse. Another stack of great breaks for everyone. So this, we, we caught some floodies off here on the first night. If you can see that white car over there, I'll just zoom in. A little white car over there. So I'm pretty sure that's where the bushland camp is. Uh, and that's where you would, you can also dock your boat there, or sorry, take your boat off there, I think, um, if, you're, if you're staying at that campsite. So it's not too far away. There's access down there as well to the sand, which you're not supposed to drive on there during the drought, but there's lots of things you're not supposed to do. <laughs> it's Australia. Yeah, anyway, so that's, that's a little bit of insights into sandbar. This is the second time we've stayed here. We did try and stay here a third time. And on the way here, my son got COVID. So that was awesome. Uh, to their credit, as soon as we got here, we said, look, <laughs> um, my son's got COVID, what do you want us to do? And they just went, here's your money back, turn around, come back some other time. So that was uh, pretty good, they didn't give us any grief. So there's a couple of kids on push bikes over there doing jumps, so there's obviously a little bike track over there. Uh, and I'll just walk you around here so you can just see the couple of the cabins and I'll take you for a tour of the cabins. Really lovely spot. Highly recommend it. Like I said, I haven't stayed in the bushland camp, which uh, I think I'd prefer to stay down here. I think potentially down here gets a bit rowdier and busier and is a bit more compact. Um, but you're right there on, on the lake and you can do, the kids can just go fishing and there's, you don't need to be on them the whole entire time to make sure they're alive. Just walk the kayaks over and so forth. So we're right on kind of transition time here where the people who are not staying are leaving, hence why it's kind of empty. Yeah, and then back here to the cabins, and these are the ensuite cabins, which I'll do a, I'll take you, well, let's go, let's go have a look at the ensuite cabin now. All right, here we are, and this is the one we're staying in, which is one of the ensuite cabins, unit 13. As you can see at the front, a fair bit of parking space. You could easily get a trailer in here and a car that's what you need to do. Uh, I'll take you for a quick tour inside. Um, I do apologize, we're waiting for the rain to stop so we haven't packed the car, so everything's on the front here, but. 
So balcony either side. I, if only ever use this balcony, I don't know why you'd use the other balcony while you'd need both. Maybe you can just choose which way you want to face. Um, I did see some of the other cabins, I saw people actually sleeping out here in swags and stuff on the actual balconies. So that's, I guess, an option. Um, each unit comes with a table and chairs. Um, so there's ours, 13 there. And all the cabins kind of look straight out into the bush. So um, it's just between you and the uh, you and the water, there's really not much, but you can't really see the water unless you're in the very first one, two, three unit cabins, which aren't the ensuite ones. They're just kind of, um, just basically a, an open room with bunks, kitchen, double bed. Uh, we have stayed in those before. Um, you can see a little park over there, and there's also some fire pits um, spread out along this run here. So if you can have fires there if you want to, you can also have just fires anywhere you want, if only you've got a pit. Um, but those are available to you. Otherwise, you can hire fire pits, bring a fire pit, or just use those ones out there. Uh, right, listen to the cabin. Um, so we've been here for two nights. Uh, pretty functional kitchen, um, full-size fridge, which was good. I was worried it'd be like a little mini fridge, but it's not full-size fridge. Uh, 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 urn, toaster, microwave, stove and oven as well. Enough cups and plates to get a family of five around without too many problems. TV as well, which worked fine with, uh, res uh, with the reception and has all your free-to-wear stuff. We watch the footy. Uh, and a reasonably like, decent sized little living space here. Um, I like that there's a nice big table with the bench chairs. That's good. There's also a heater up here, which actually worked really, really well. It is autumn, we're here in April, so it's not full cold. But there's no air con and there's no fans. So in the middle of the heat of summer, it probably could be a bit stuffy. We, when we stayed in the other cabin, it was January, I remember it being quite stuffy. Um, but you are right on the coast, you can open the windows. There's a, there's a significant thing I want to point out here is the space down here, and I'll show you why in a minute. But uh, we had a mattress out here sleeping, and when I walked past other cabins, I noticed that a lot of people had mattresses in this area sleeping at night, and I'll show you why. So the two kind of uh, bed spaces, you've got your uh, parents' retreat <laughs> in here. Uh, which is just a double um, with the steel on the end as well. So for us tall guys, it's a little bit of a tight fit. I didn't find a bed too bad. Uh, I brought, we brought our own pillows. They do provide pillows. Uh, there were towels here, but we paid an extra $10 per person for linen uh, because we don't have any linen at the moment. Uh, we had a house fire, different story. Uh, so we paid a little bit extra. I don't know if the towels came with that. It's not clear on the website. I can't remember if they were here last time, but they're pretty nice towels. So I suspect you, they come because you paid for it. Uh, a nice, not, a nice little arrangement of just storage space here, which we did use completely. Uh, little bedside tables as well. Uh, when you come through here, you've got a open glass shower. Uh, heat was good, pressure was good, drainage was not. Uh, drain, it did flood quite quickly, but uh, not the Hilton. And a toilet in here, as you can see, pretty enclosed space, but actually a quite a decent sized bathroom. It's not tight in there uh, for brushing your teeth, doing your hair, not that I ever do my hair. Uh, and in here you got the three bunks, right? So this is, I'm glad that there's at least room for a family of five in here. Obviously you could put a family of six, people with obviously sleeping swags as well. Uh, but I wanted you to notice this, up the top here there's no railing and the mattress is right at the top. Uh, nice thick mattresses, nice comfortable mattresses for the kids, but that's that to me, that was too much for us. That's a pretty big drop, and it doesn't take much for a kid to roll off that because there's nothing to stop you whatsoever. Uh, so that's why we moved this mattress out into that space out there and had one kid sleeping out there because what well, didn't feel safe for that. Uh, and a tiny bit of storage space back here as well. So that's what you can expect from the ensuite cabins. Look, it's been per a perfectly comfortable stay, very, very functional, uh, useful having you know, all the cabin benefits that you don't get in the tents, which are just opposite us here in terms of electricity, the microwave, that type of thing. Uh, but yeah, that's an insight into the cabins. Uh, decent condition, I would say. They just said apparently this has just been renovated. Uh, and you know, it looks reasonably fresh. Uh, so that's it. The only thing is a bit of a bummer, two night minimum with the cabins uh, because of the cleaning costs, I'm told. So if you just want to do a stopover like we frequently do in all of these places where we're just driving down the coast, we just want one place for the night, this is not your place. Uh, but uh, uh, for a two night stay or more, 
uh, it's, you know, it's, it's a pretty good cabin. It's not Discovery Parks quality, uh, but they're not really charging Discovery Parks quality prices either. So those are my thoughts on the Sandbar Camping Ground. I highly recommend it. It's a really, really good place to stay. Great with the kids. Just if you get it with the right amount of crowd as well, uh, and the fish are biting, it's, it's a bit of a dream really. Uh, I would definitely be coming back. Thank you very much for watching. I'm Chris Dead. Until next time, back on the road. Thank you.